um, kind of in the vein of both last week, which is when we gave our book recommendations, and um, this week talking about good financial advice and um, people who kind of had their he- their heads screwed on straight. Do you want to talk a little bit about a book that you're reading, Maxfield? You're telling me about it this morning. So the book I want to talk about is it's a biography of a man named Stephen Gerard. So Stephen Gerard was the richest American from roughly the year 1800 until the year 1831 when he died. And what's so remarkable about Stephen Gerard is that not only did he beat all of the odds to become the richest man in America, but he also acted in an extremely, not only patriotic, but very, very kind way despite his incredible wealth. And so let me just give you a a couple of examples. When he was born, he was born in France, and he had a defective right eye that contemporaries described as grotesque. Okay, so now just keep this in mind. Keep in mind the odds that this man is fighting against to then eventually become the richest man in the United States. So he goes on. He becomes a ship captain. He's over in he's in France. He's trading with the West Indies, which are French. Some of them are French colonies. And he's over in the West Indies at one point on Haiti, which it wasn't named Haiti at the time, but he was there right when the American Revolution broke out. And the problem with that, for, from his perspective, was that because he needed to get either back to France or somewhere else, Britain had put a blockade on all shipping because it was both in conflict with France and in conflict with the United States, so he couldn't get back. So what he ended up, where he ended up going was to Philadelphia, which was the biggest port in the United States at the time, and it was eventually going to be the capital of the United States before Washington, D.C. did. So he ended up in this, in this wonderful place for what turned out to be a man with incredible talents trading merchandise and building a trade network that went all around the world. And so that's how he got so rich. But here's the most interesting thing about Stephen Girard. So in 1793, he had already he'd gotten to the United States. He'd been there for a while. He'd become one of the richest people in Philadelphia, albeit probably not in the, in the United States at the time. In 1793, there was a yellow fever epidemic in Philadelphia that killed 10% of Philadelphia's residents. Okay, so one in 10 people in Philadelphia died in 1793 from yellow fever over a period of five months, all right? Well, yellow fever came from from the West Indies, which Stephen Jarre, it seems like, because he never came down with it, it seems like he maybe had built up some antibodies to it, but he didn't know it at the time. So the mayor of Philadelphia asked for people because 40% of the, the city fled, as you would under, as, 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 as any right, sane person would do. But the mayor asked citizens to stay and help the people that were sick with this extremely contagious disease. Well, Stephen Gerard was one of 12, only 12 in the entire city of Philadelphia, who volunteered to stay. But Stephen Gerard didn't just volunteer to stay in some sort of administrative capacity. He volunteered to run the hospital, a makeshift hospital that was called a human slaughterhouse is how they explained it, for yellow fever victims because you couldn't take yellow fever victims to the the Pennsylvania hospital because then they'd affect everybody else. But Stephen Jarre didn't just uh, uh, run this. He actually acted as a nurse in it because he couldn't get enough people to actually help the, the patients. So this is a man who was literally in contact with yellow fever victims, literally helping save their lives at the time that he was one of the richest Americans of all time. And so later on in his life, I mean, he just did all these incredible things. He helped bail out the United States in the midst of the War of 1812, which had we lost, we probably would have lost our independence again to Great Britain. So he's just done all these incredible things. And then at the end of his life, and this is, he really set the tone for what we're seeing now today with your Mark Zuckerbergs, your Warren Buffetts, your Bill Gates that are donating the vast majority of their wealth to charities. He gave 98% of his wealth to charity. But here's what he did. And this is, this is really kind of his crowning achievement, if you will, in all of history. He put the money in trust and then designated people in the city of Philadelphia positions in Philadelphia who'd been be the trustees of this trust. And this trust was created for the purpose of endowing, creating and endowing forevermore for a school for low income orphans. Okay. That from all over the United States, this school has been in operation, giving full scholarship to low income orphans ever since it was created in the 1830s. So you're talking about literally thousands of lives that are directly impacted by this. And not only those thousands of lives that are directly impacted of this, 
But these are life-changing opportunities for people because it is a free education from kindergarten all the way through high school. So these people now, there are many of them, we can presume, are probably becoming the first people in their families to go to college, which is a transformative thing for subsequent generations of a family. So, you know, in the spirit of Christmas and Thanksgiving and, and, and all, of these different, all of these different things, you know, and at the same time that, you know, we kind of have this political scene going on where, you know, vitriol is, is kind, of, kind of part and parcel with it, you know, it's just, it's so nice to think about, you know, these people in our history that lived extraordinary, extraordinary lives and extraordinarily kind lives. That's true. Um, do you want to say what the name of the book was and who it's by? I do. Sorry. Let me <laughs> get the name of this right here. It's kind, of, it's kind of a niche book, as you can imagine. <laughs> it's called Stephen Gerard, The Life and Times of America's First Tycoon by a man named George Wilson. It is a phenomenal book. I loved it, every second of it. It's well written. It's a fantastic story. I highly recommend it to anybody who's listening.